Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. St. Patrick's Day is back in downtown Detroit and making up for lost time. We'll let you know if they're doing it safely. All right, Jason, also thieves posing as water department employees will tell you where they're targeting senior citizens. But we begin with a carjacker taking off with a father's car with his seven-year-old son still inside. The boy's father had run into a gas station off I-75 to get something when that carjacker struck. And before the dad could do anything, the man sped off. He dumped the child about three miles away before continuing. Mara McDonald is live at 75 in Warren. And Mara, an alert neighbor, really saved the day here. Thank goodness, Devin, for Brenda Stinson. She is the one bright spot in this entire ordeal that has been absolutely terrifying for this child and his family. It started here at the mobile station. He was just sitting inside his dad's car waiting for him to come out of the store when the unthinkable happened. He started running down the street like kept going. I was like, where you going? Brenda saw a scared child and went to find out what was going on. And I was like, what's wrong? He was so shook up and frightened. She thought he was lost, asked if he knew how to call his mom or dad. Yes, then I was dialing 911. The child is recovered. Detroit police on the scene within minutes and scooped him up. That follow a kidnapping in a North of High 25 Warren location, mobile gas station. This all started here. His dad left him in his white Impala and ran into the store to get something. That's when a man with a short afro wearing a black T-shirt and royal blue pants came up to the car. He had a cast on one leg and was using a walker and appeared to have had a hospital wristband on and stole the car with a little boy inside. After he was found, the family converged at the 7th Precinct, where the little one was checked out by Detroit EMS. He's okay. Thank goodness for Brenda Stinson following her gut feeling something was wrong and going to help. Oh, I'm just so glad I was right here. I'm so glad that was God's will right there. I'm so grateful and thankful that I was able to save this baby today. Back here alive, that little seven year old was found about three miles away from here where the carjacker dumped him. As of right now, DPD does not have a suspect in custody, nor have they found that white Impala. They are looking for it, and this is a Project Greenlight station, so they do have surveillance video. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a look at it and the guy with the cast and the walker sometime tomorrow. We're live on Detroit's East Side tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. We'll see. Okay, Mara, thank you. Well, it is dry out there right now, but showers are on the way. Let's see when the wet weather is going to arrive as we head to bed. Should be around by the time we wake up tomorrow, guys, but it's not going to be there for everybody, at least in the short term. Uh, we will see that spread further south as we get through the morning hours. So let's take a look at where it's at now. It's coming in from two directions. We've got a stripe to our north. We've got an area to the south, and those two will sort of converge on southeast Michigan as we head towards tomorrow morning. It's that northern stripe that we'll likely see develop first in the north zone, sinking down. So during the morning commute, showers are going to be scattered around, a little bit more prevalent north of M59. But as that entire mass moves to the south, Everything after 10 a.m. is going to be primarily south of 94 and should be out of here by about 5 o'clock in the evening. But the winds will be the other story, both Thursday and Friday. So even though we'll ditch the rain there at 5 o'clock, we're going to hold on to the winds through Friday. And that's why Lakeshore flood advisories are up for most of the east side. Flood warning out for Monroe County, where some of that flooding could be significant right there along the Erie shoreline. It starts at 11 a.m. on Thursday, running through Friday morning. Now, as far as what we can expect beyond that, temperatures are another story, and we'll talk about where they go from here in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, moving now to the coronavirus. The state is watching key numbers as we experience a spike in cases. Uh, very worrisome. Michigan reporting 3,164 new cases today. Now, no new deaths to report, but this is the highest single day number of new cases since January. COVID Act now reports Michigan has the nation's highest infection rate, meaning the virus is spreading to more people in Michigan than other states right now. One potential reason for that surge is the more contagious UK variant. Michigan has 725 cases involving that variant, and that is 15% of all of those cases reported nationally. However, more Michiganders are getting the vaccine. In Detroit, city residents age 50 and older are now eligible to get a vaccine at the TCF Center. 
Everything is starting to move the right direction. Uh, we're going to top 30,000 this week. In a couple of weeks, when every adult is eligible, uh, we need to be upwards of 40,000 a week, and we will be ready for that. The mayor also says funding from the federal government will allow Detroit to recall 750 employees and put them back on full-time work. St. Patrick's Day celebrations in full force tonight in downtown Detroit. Restrictions were loosened earlier this month to allow 50% capacity or up to 100 people. Well, that coupled with nice weather for outdoor seating made for big crowds. Let's bring in Jason Colthorpe in Corktown, just as bars closed a few minutes ago, Jason. Yeah, that was one of the other changes to those restrictions. Kimberly bars could stay open until 11 instead of 10. And here in Corktown, things are very calm just after the bars closed up. However, not far from here, a much different scene as health inspectors from the health department in Detroit were checking in on some of the hot spots tonight to make sure all the rules were being followed. The sights. I think that there is cabin fever going on and sounds of St. Patrick's Day. And people are just anxious to get out and get back to normal. Felt like they were a year in the making. Get out the house, you know what I'm saying? The coronavirus, you know, get out and see people. The Detroit Health Department was also ready for tonight. Environmental health specialists stopped at some of the hot spots, including Old Shillelagh on Monroe. <laughs> there were reminders from people to mask up, sit down, and distance. And from the DJ as well. You walk into the bathroom, please put your mask on. And while it was crowded in spots, many were outside and felt things were pretty safe. St. Patrick's Day, man. Everybody down here. We got to do it safely. Like you said, he got a mask, I got a mask, he got a mask, you got a mask. I feel like everybody looking pretty safe. I double mask because there are many people who are not masked at all. But some, like Kimberly Morgan, take one look around and know this has the potential to be a super spreader event. I understand that uh, COVID-19 is real. And even though I've already been vaccinated, I'm not taking any chances, not taking anything for granted. And of course, once you've had a few beverages, everybody feels like everybody's safe from everything, right? Uh, by the way, we can confirm there was a heavy police presence uh, in that area all night long. I talked to Detroit police a little while ago. They said the only serious incident they know of at the moment was a non-fatal shooting on Bobian that involved a 32-year-old man who uh, was shot, uh, got medical attention, and they tell me he went to the hospital but is going to be all right. We're live in Corktown and I, Jason Coulthorpe, local for Okay, Jason, thank you. Allen Park Police sending a warning tonight about a group of thieves posing as Water Department employees. Police say these men targeted a senior citizen around 5 p.m. on Roslyn Avenue, getting into her home and stealing valuables after pretending to be workers with the Water Department. They drove away in this Dodge SUV. Anyone with any information about who they might be or what happened is urged to contact Allen Park Police right away. New technology helps Detroit police take illegal guns from a gun making operation. Police seize guns, parts, ammunition, and a drill that police say was used to make untraceable ghost guns from a home on Hoyt near Seven Mile. Chief James Craig says shot spotter technology alerted officers to shots that were fired at the home yesterday. And when they got there, officers found more than 75 shell casings and they were able to arrest two 25 year old men, one of them believed to have been involved in a recent shooting. A nurse charged for allegedly stealing vaccines from the TCF Center faced a judge today. Saida Alali of Livonia is charged with larceny. Prosecutors say she put two syringes filled with the Moderna vaccine and two vaccination cards in her pocket on Monday. The city says she worked at the TCF Center for weeks and was hired through a staffing agency. She pleaded not guilty and a judge granted her bond. An update now to a story we brought you last night at 11. A city of Warren employee who was appointed by Mayor Jim Fouts has resigned amid an investigation into his hiring. Jamie Rowe, a Republican political consultant, was hired last year as a clerical technician. Members of the city council alleged his appointment was done in secret and that he was working on several political campaigns while on city time. Last night, city council approved an investigation into his appointment by Mayor Fouts. Well, Roe resigned this afternoon. City council, though, is now forwarding the matter to Attorney General Dana Nessel's office. 
It is now official. The IRS has postponed this year's federal tax deadline. The IRS and Treasury Department has extended the traditional deadline from April 15th to May 17th giving Americans more time to file tax returns. If taxpayers still need more time than that, they can request an extension to October 15th. Still ahead, a pregnant mother who was vaccinated passes the antibodies to her newborn. How that could be a game changer in protecting children from COVID. And a high-speed chase down Woodward Avenue ends in a deadly crash near the Detroit Zoo. The video showing what happened moments before the driver loses control. But first, he has confessed to carrying out the shooting rampage at three Atlanta-area spas, how his parents were the ones who helped police catch him when we come back. 